lunch will probably come in in about an hour, so. <clears throat> but it's okay as we come together to worship the Lord. Psalm 18 declares this today, and let it be our declaration. I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, and so shall I be saved from my enemies. Can I have an amen to that? Amen. Praise the Lord. That is our God. That is God who is able to be all things to us. So would you stand with me this morning as we come to worship him today? Father, we thank you in the, that we have this opportunity to worship together. Lord, we ask you to come and to just fill this place with your presence, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, that you are the Lord of lords, the King of kings, and you are the one who watches over us and that you care for us, Lord. We thank you for that. And Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence here today. So come and make your presence known here, Lord, as we worship now in spirit and in truth, Lord. And we thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's worship together.
Praise His 
Jesus, your name will be famous in all the world. Your name in Telford, your name will be famous, so oh God, for oh, you're so great, oh God, for oh, you're so great, oh Lord, your name. want to be close, close to your side, so heaven is real, and death is a lie. I want to hear voices of angels above, singing as one, hallelujah, holy, holy. God Almighty, great I am, who is worthy, none beside thee, God Almighty, great I am. I want to be close. Close to your side, so heaven is real and death is a lie. I want to hear voices of angels above singing as one. Hallelujah, holy, holy God. God Almighty, great I am, hallelujah, holy, holy, God Almighty, the great I am, who is worthy, none beside thee, God
mountains shake before him, the demons run and flee. At the mention of the name, King of Majesty, there is no power in hell or any who can stand.
Exalted in our praise, Jesus. All glory to you, Lord. Be exalted, O God. Be praised, be glorified in this place, O God. Be praised, be glorified, O God. You are worthy of all praise, O God. All praise.
from heaven's throne you came to us and set your heart upon the cross we'll never know the sacrifice you made for all our sin and all our shame you took the nails you took our place and no one else could do what you have done one name one name is higher one name is stronger than any grave than any throne christ exalted above every other name is what? Jesus is what? 
is Jesus. One more time. Jesus. No grave could hold him. No Roman Empire could kill him. No one, the Roman Empire is long gone, but Jesus is still alive. Amen? He's ruling and reigning. He's on the throne of heaven every day of our lives. Even when we think things are going, oh my goodness, what's happening? God is not moved. Isn't that good news? Because he's got it in his hands. Praise the Lord. Let's give him another shout of praise here today. Lord, we praise you, O oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, worship team. What an awesome time of worship. Now, I want you to find someone that you have not met before and just go and greet them this morning and bless them and say, I'm glad you're here today because Jesus is here with us today. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated then, if you can. <laughs> welcome, welcome to everyone here today. We're glad you're here. I'm just uh, looking for the Lord to touch your life in every area that you need. Would you take out of your bulletin, please, the connection card looks like this. If you take a connection card out, please go ahead and fill it in. If you're here for a first time, please fill in more of it. We'd appreciate that on the front side. But for everybody, if you fill it in, please. And then also on the reverse side, uh, any prayer request or any praise report, uh, we would like to know. We would like to rejoice with you. We would like to pray with you. And uh, just asking the Lord to continue to move in, in everybody's life here. I want to make a few announcements. Um, and one, let me start with this one. So everybody listen a minute. Next Sunday is a very special Sunday. It's the 19th of March. And we are teaming up, Hopewell is teaming up with an organization uh, that is across the United States called Christians United for Israel. They have three million members. Can you say three million? Okay, they have three million members. They are going to be here next uh, Friday night. It's going to start at 6 o'clock. The speaker in the Sunday morning will be Victor, huh? Sunday. What did I say? That was a slip. Sunday. Thank you. Sunday evening. Sunday evening at uh, 6 o'clock. And uh, Victor Stierski, who's been here before from Christians United for Israel, will be here also uh, in the morning service. But we will be gathering in the evening. Now, here's what I want you to know. I need all of you to help volunteer. How about that? We will need parking attendants, maybe 8 to 10 people, to help us to park cars. This sanctuary could end up being 100% filled. This is, a, this is a large, large event. This is not like a nice little meeting. This is an extremely large event. After the morning service, we will have to bring more chairs out and be able to put chairs out. So we're going to need people for that. We're going to need more ushers and greeters. So you can see Bill for that. Bill Free, where's Bill at? Give a wave, Bill, if you're somewhere in here. Okay, over there. All right. Uh, see Bill for ushers and greeters. But I would like hosts also, people who would like to host some of the guests as they're coming in, some of the special guests, and, uh, and then we're going to have a place for them to be able to just uh, have some rest or fellowship and refreshments before the service and then again afterwards. Um, this is a time where we've invited over 50 rabbis to come and cantors, those of the Jewish faith. I mean, we are totally sold out and totally supportive of Israel 
because God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Israel. And he's never stopped being that, despite the confusion of a lot of people in the world today. And so we're going to need parking attendants, we're going to need ushers, we're going to need greeters, we're going to need helpers. There's a reception, for a kosher reception, for the visitors and guests that uh, are a part of that, the Jewish people that are part of that next uh, Sunday evening. So we need many, many uh, people to help out. We need tech team. You know, we need the chairs move. So if you can indicate on your connection card that you would like to help and volunteer one of those areas. Uh, also, if you would let the office know that you can volunteer and help us out. We just need everybody's help, and it's going to be an awesome, awesome night of blessing. Uh, you know, I'll tell you, events like this have brought uh, many of our Jewish friends to tears, and they will say, why are the Gentiles doing this for us? And then we get to say, it's the love of Jesus. And God is using Gentiles in this hour to make the Jewish uh, people jealous for him, which is what the Bible says in the New Testament. Paul wrote that. And so I just want to let you know, this is a big, big event, and we are very, very excited about it, have been doing a lot of planning. We'll have lots of guests here next uh, Sunday evening. Okay, uh, I think there's a few people that have some announcements to help me with, so I need Pamela here, I need Sandra here, I need uh, Shirley here, and I need also uh, Hannah, Dan, and Allie. So Shirley, you come up first. What, what, what are you wearing here today? Wow, look at this. Guess what this announcement is about? Lost and found. These are not my things. There's about six pair of reading glasses back there. I did have a problem, though, because I went to the coat rack, and it's full, and I couldn't, didn't know which are lost and found. So this is my friend's coat, so don't claim this one because it already belongs to someone. But please see the lost and found back there um, for your things because we are going to get put them to other use sooner or later. And if you are lost, we will lead you to Christ so you are found also. Thank you, Shirley. Sandra, do you want to come up? You have a powerful class that you're having every, is it once a month, I think it is? Is that right? That's correct. I'm Sandra Weidman, and I'm the facilitator of the class um, Taking Back Your Temple, and Taking Care of Your Temple, Taking Back Your Health. And so we meet every third Saturday, which would be this coming Saturday. And we've had, uh, we meet in the cafe if we're going to have a demo of food for uh, for preparation, and we'll meet in the meeting place if we're not, and it will be determined each week. So far, we've enjoyed local guest speakers, we've watched the food and pharma documentaries, and we've had many informative and interactive conversations about our health. We've also tasted delicious and healthy samples of good food. Um, we meet this next Saturday. The topic is going to be obstacles inside and out. Many of us have health issues that are inside us that we're not quite sure how to handle or that are um, genetic lifestyle things. And then we also have outside uh, situations that our own um, discipline, willpower, those kinds of things, challenges that we have. And so if you're interested, please come see me or you can get in contact with the office. We usually have about 15 to 20 people. And we wanted to invite all of you. It's a great time to learn how to take better care of our temples, the residing of the Holy Spirit. So thank you. Saturday every, month? every third Saturday. At what time? At 10 to 11.30. 11 11.30, okay, good. Yes. All right, thank good. You. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, Pamela, come on up here. She's getting ready to lead a, uh, a, an event for Good Friday and Good and, and Monday Thursday, I believe. Isn't that right? Coming up to, or no, you didn't hear that. She's looking at me like, what's he saying? Yeah. All right, I'll let her make the announcement. Good morning, everybody. We are getting ready for a wonderful event on Good Friday. We may add another day if we decide we need to. And it is a dramatic presentation of, of course, Jesus' life and his crucifixion and his resurrection. But we need you. We need some help. We need people that are also willing to rearrange some furniture. We need people that are willing to work with us with props. And I need people for walk-on parts um, to follow Jesus through his life and his ministry while he's here on earth. And I really invite you to participate if you have any any um, inclination to do so. Our practices are Monday nights at six o'clock. And I encourage you because 
walking through the event yourself in practice and as you're participating becomes an enormous blessing to you and an opportunity to really go deeper with the Lord in his, his um, life and his crucifixion and his resurrection. So thank you, and we will be preparing something for children to be involved also. All right. So you need a few act. You need a few actors then. Is that right for the walk-on parts? Okay. I, I know there's some actors in here. I've seen them act out. So I know. <laughs> Amen. All right. Good. Thank you, Hannah, and Allie, and Dan. If you're here, come on up a minute. Uh, they are getting ready for a major trip over to Kenya with a gathering of potentially 500 youth. Is that what I hear? Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, next Sunday this time we will be in my base in Kilgore's, Kenya. We'll be worshiping and preaching among the Maasai, which are the warriors. Yes, we are potentially expecting 500 from the five nations of Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, and Somalia. And I am so proud to say that out of the 48 that we have sponsored, over three, uh, three quarters have come from this congregation. We see God is about territories, and we're taking back the territories. We're equipping the young people, training them, because the Muslim spirit is coming in to crush. But God is raising up an army to fight back. And we're going to be doing many things. We're going to be going to the prisons. Uh, we're going to be doing stuff that I normally do medical clinics, but really we're about training the youth that are coming. And so I'm excited, and I have trained them for the last couple of weeks, uh, several weeks, and I'd love to see the growth that they're doing. So please pray for us as we travel, okay, and as we minister. Okay, I want to, we want to pray for them. Elders that are handy, come on up a minute. We want to pray for them. And also, um, I want you to write down those nations and the dates of the trip. Would you mention, write this down on your bulletin because I'm asking for prayer. This is not a light mission trip. This is not going to Mexico on the Riviera or you know anything like this. This is serious stuff. So what are the nations again? Uh, Uganda, Tanzania, Kenya, Rwanda, and Somalia. And Tanzania is the one where we just were and the territorial uh, demons shrieked when we came because they knew we were there to take them down. Amen, amen. And what's the date of the trip? Okay, we are flying out of uh, Philadelphia the 16th. We will arrive in Nairobi the 17th, travel out to Kilgoris on the 18th, and we will be flying home on the 26th. 20, well, it's the Tuesday, two weeks from that. Yeah, we'll be coming home. All right, yeah, I'll write them down for you. Yeah. Okay, good. All right, let's pray for them. Father, we join. Would you just lift a hand of blessing toward them? Father, we join together. And Lord, today we pray your divine protection along with the calling, Lord. We thank you that where you call us, Lord, where you give us the vision, you also give us the provision for it. And so, Lord, we thank you for calling for Ali upon her life. I pray your divine healing, protection, and covering right now, Lord, over Hannah, that you continue to anoint her. Lord, just increase that, that anointing in a greater and greater way, Lord. I thank you for that, that I pray for David. Dan right now, Father, you're covering, you're anointing, you're blessing upon him as they, uh, each one, as they stretch out and as they give themselves to you, O oh God. God, I thank you that you have called them for this hour, that you have called them for this mission. And I thank you that no weapon formed against them will prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. And every tongue that rises up against them shall be condemned in the name of Jesus Christ. And I thank you, Lord, for their righteousness that they stand in is of you, Lord, is of you, O oh God, is of you, and the enemy will know, and he will flee in the mighty name of Jesus because of Christ who dwells in them. God, I thank you for that right now, Lord, that this would be an amazing trip, a trip of safety and blessing and power, a demonstration of your kingdom, that your kingdom would come and your will would be done through, through this, and that the young people that are there, the 500, Lord, that they would be impacted forever. God, not for just a weekend, but forever, Lord, that they would be brought into the kingdom of God. We're praying for 100% of them to come into the kingdom of God right now in Jesus' name. God, we thank you now. We bless you for that. Any of the elders that would like to add to that? Lord, just pray that as they go out,
as they go into this mission field, Lord, that you will extend an amazing amount of favor over them, that as they walk into places where people may not be receptive, that hearts will be receptive to their word. Lord, as they go out, that they will be able to speak truth and it will be an attraction to people, that your spirit will draw, that as they, as they offer your word and love out to the people they come in contact, Lord, that your favor will just go before them, that nations will be changed, that the hearts of these young that come will be turned towards you, and that they will rise up in the destiny that you called for them. We so we just pray your blessing over each one of this team as they go out, Lord. We just thank you for them in Jesus' name. I just had a sense as we were kind of here praying that I almost had a picture of you walking like down through like a road or something. There's like kind of people everywhere and things everywhere. And I just had a sense that when you go, there are so many things that you could give your attention or focus to or so many disruptions or so many things. But I just had a picture of you just, just walking straight down that road to what needed to be accomplished and what was established there. And there are things that feel like, well, that, that could be something that we need to address or something that we need to go after or something that we need to but just had a sense of just stay on that road because there's something specific and there's other things. So a clarity for you. In Jesus' name, we just pray that there be a clarity and a focus. And we thank you that you are a God of clarity and that you are a God of order. And in Jesus' name, we just renounce anything that would be beyond what you have for them. We just pray for that focus, for that mission to be accomplished. We thank you that it's a declaration that your word does not return void. Amen. And we claim that in Jesus' name, that Amen. whatever else happens, we just claim that that word will come back with fruit and result for them yes. in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I just want to uh, decree and declare over you a very two simple phrases, but the first is that you will be, uh, as, and to the spirit realm, that you will be invisible in areas of vulnerability and visible in areas of victory in Jesus' name. Yeah, let's give a hand now. Thank you, Lord. All right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay. We love to see our, our folks going out to the mission fields short term or long term it's a part of the great commission and uh, it's a part of what we do here at hopewell so i thank the lord for each one there and there's probably more financial need if you want to sponsor more of the, the youth over there just see hannah and you can uh, you can contribute to that all right if the ushers would come forward we'll receive the morning offering pastor anita is going to be bringing the word today and uh, so we want to just go ahead and lift up the offering to the Lord this morning. I thank the Lord this week for um, for watching over and protecting uh, Bambi. She, uh, I guess she's probably downstairs. Uh, oh, there she is. You were hiding on me. Anyway, she was driving one of their vehicles, a truck, right? And somebody broadsided her and uh, basically destroyed the truck but preserved her. Were the children with you at all? No, just yourself. But I want to decree and declare there's going to be no more accidents at all. And that God will redeem it and even give back more. So that's my prayer for, for them. So Father, we thank you that you are almighty God and that Lord, we can stand in that place and Lord, put our total trust in you to know that you have our well-being in mind. Lord, I pray that you would redeem that situation. Lord, bring back blessing upon blessing to Bambi and, Lord, to Matt and to their family, Lord, in amazing ways. God, I pray and declare over the people today also your divine protection. Lord, as a pastor here, Lord, I pray divine protection right now, and I declare the enemy has no way to come against anyone here in Jesus' name. Lord, I break those assignments off right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, let your peace rule and reign over this place, over each person here, each family member. 
Lord, we bless you and thank you for that. Lord, we lift up to you today now our offering. Lord, we lift it up to you with our praise and our thanksgiving, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity to give back to you. And we ask that you would bless each one and bless the offering today. God, that you would also pour out your anointing upon Pastor Anita. She comes to bring the word today. That, Lord, there will be strength and anointing upon her, O oh God. And, Lord, I pray for all of the needs of the congregation. Every need we just lay before your throne of grace. And, Lord, there is grace abundance. Grace for every need that we would have. And even abundance beyond that. So, Lord, I thank you for these things now today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may receive it. All right. Pastor Anita, if you come up. I want to mention this also, that uh, Pastor Joel, as you know, was in Israel uh, just a couple weeks ago. And he is going to be speaking on uh, Tuesday evening here at the Tuesday evening and showing some of the slides. And that is, if we all agree that the storm will be cast into the sea in the name of Jesus. We don't need snow. Except that our sins are made white as snow. Amen. <laughs> but anyway, so Pastor Joel is on for that Tuesday night by faith. And so, Lord, thank you. Now, Father, I pray that you bless, Lord, Pastor Anita, my beloved. God, that you give her your word, quicken it to her now, Lord. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Me, are we on? We're on. Okay, good. Good. Well, what a sweet presence of the Lord this morning. Wonderful to be in his house. We've been on a theme of blessed to be a blessing. And the message that the Lord's uh, given me for you today is called the art of listening. And uh, listening ties directly into the blessing of God that flows. In Deuteronomy 30, 20, or I think it's on now. It's on. Okay. Scripture says this, love the Lord your God, listen to his voice and hold fast to him. Love the Lord your God, listen to Listen to his voice, hold fast to him. And then that passage speaks about it's a matter of life and death. It's a matter of blessing and cursing. And as we listen to the Lord and we choose to follow him, we're actually choosing life. We're choosing life for ourselves and we're choosing life for our families. But it's tied into hearing the voice of the Lord and walking faithfully with him. As I was preparing, the Lord directed me to a story that I want to share with you this morning as we open up. And it's, um, it comes from this book by Lisa Bevere. It's called Girls with Swords, How to Carry Your Cross Like a Hero. It's a great book. And Lisa was talking about her father and how he was um, basically, she calls him a heathen. He was a really rough character. He had serious issues with alcohol and anger and rage. And he um, had abandoned the family. Uh, not only he divorced his wife, but he abandoned his children as well. And uh, it was very difficult for the family. And, and when she would try and visit with him, he was, he was so vile, um, it would frighten the children, the things that he would say and the things that he would do. And so it was very difficult to have any kind of a relationship. Well, as the years moved on, um, his, his drinking took such a toll that he, he developed dementia. And um, his, she said, my father's dementia progressed to the place where his girlfriend had no choice but to put him in a high security facility. And um, so that's where he was. Before this, let me just say that um, she, at one point she had gone to visit him and uh, they had set up the visit. He knew they were coming, she and the children. And they had driven two and a half hours to get there. He was, knew they were coming. And when they got there, he wasn't there. There was a note on the door, sorry, I made other plans. And it was devastating, and, and, and she just felt fatherless. And in that, in that moment of crisis and devastation, like he, he's totally abandoned us, um, the Lord spoke to her, and, and he said, you're looking at this all wrong. What you see as rejection by her father, I see as adoption. And she said, what? And he said, when you are completely abandoned by your natural father, you are utterly adopted by me. 
In a sense, your father has renounced any claim to you and your children, but now nothing stands between us. You are all mine. And um, it was a powerful time. And God had spoken to her that her father was going to be saved. He had given her that word. But in the process, it got worse and worse and worse. And so now we're going to move to the point where he has dementia. And now her, her little children are grown, her boys are grown, the one son is married, and he has a baby. So she wanted to visit him um, again. She brought along her firstborn son, Addison, and his wife and their newborn baby. And uh, she wanted her father to see his great-grandchild. And when they got there at the facility, she laid out pictures, thinking, well, maybe he'll connect with these pictures of when her son was young and years before. And um, she put them out there, and she began pointing to the pictures and conversing with her father, trying to explain to him. And all of a sudden, the light went on, and he connected, and he knew who this was. So he looked at his now-grown grandson, and he looked at the pictures, and the light goes on. I knew he understood he bobbed his head gently and pointed knowingly from the picture in his hand to my son. He was present with us, but I had no idea for how long. I lifted a silent prayer. Heavenly Father, what should I say? The response was shocking and immediate. Tell him he was a good dad. What? Stunned, I countered, that's a lie. I'm not going to lie to him, especially not now. He was not a good father. I heard a firm assurance. He was as good as he knew how to be. In disbelief, I argued, he could have learned how to be better. My rebuttal was met with silence. Over the decades, I've learned that God doesn't argue. I drew a deep breath, reached over, and took my father's hands in mine. I lifted them between us to draw his attention. I looked him in the eyes and I repeated what I had heard. Dad, you were a good dad. My father was stunned. It was as though a tremor passed through his entire body and his eyes brimmed with tears. He kissed the back of my hands and with great effort, he said these two words, thank you. With those words, everything changed. The stifled atmosphere of the nursing home felt lighter and I realized my father's heart had just opened. We all began to pray over my father according to the promise and acts that God had given me so long ago. We thanked God for my father's salvation and canceled any debts he might feel he owed according to John 20, 23. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you, if you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withhold, withheld. The entire time we prayed, my father squeezed my hands in affirmation and continued to rain kisses on the backs of my hands. It was a holy moment of love and forgiveness. His gestures were pure and innocent, like a child's. There was no hint of the lewdness I'd experienced on my past visits. When it was over, Dad was visibly tired. She accompanied him back to his room and tucked him into bed. And as she spoke with the nurse, a few minutes later, he got up and he wandered out again. I called to him, but he walked right past us as though we were complete strangers. Something had happened in our time together, but now dad was gone again. Well, a year passed, and she felt troubled in the night. She felt that something was stirring and that her father's time was short. And then on New Year's Eve, she heard this. The Spirit of God whispered to her as she was crying. You are crying because this is the year you will say goodbye to your father. She was on a ministry trip in Canada another week later and she got a call that her father was in fact dying and the woman's voice said if you want to say goodbye to him you'll have to come today well there was no way she could get there that day she was up in Canada he was in Florida and so she offered to put the phone up to his ear and Lisa was able to speak words of love to her father in his dying moments shortly after that he was gone and that was it there was no funeral he had arranged for his body to be cremated. But then, in May of 2011, she met up with the faithfulness of God. She says this, I was speaking at a women's conference in Jacksonville, Florida. In my first session, I noted an adorable young woman with spiky red hair. For some reason, amid, amid a crowd of more than a 1,000, she was the one person that she remembered and her attention was drawn to. 
So at the end of the session, the woman came toward her and Lisa went to speak to her and introduce herself. But before she could say anything, this woman introduced herself and she said, Lisa, I am April. We spoke on the phone. My mind searched for any memories of speaking to someone named April from Jacksonville. She noticed I had a blank and began to fill in the spaces for me. I am the one who called you the day your father died. I drove up here with some of my friends to be at this conference when I heard you'd be here. I was speechless. April continued, I was your father's social worker for the last five years. He was an awful patient. He was kicked out of the first facility he was placed in. He ran away. He was violent, he stole a car, and he was beat up by the police. But for the last year, he was an angel. He kissed my hand whenever I saw him. God is faithful. God is so faithful. That's the heart of the Father, to transform a life that looks like it's just too far gone. It looks like it's too far gone. What hope is there? But there's always hope in the Father. But the key is that Lisa heard the voice of God. She heard the voice of God tell him he was a good father. What sense does that make? He was not a good father in any estimation of the world. But that's the word the Father had for him. Because that was the word of life that was going to unlock the darkness and bring life and bring hope to a man who was in all appearances lost and gone. And so she listened. Her voice, her ear was tuned to hear the voice of God. She listened and she heard and she obeyed. It would have been very easy to just deny it and say, I have missed God. That cannot possibly be the voice of God. But she had trained her ear to hear. And so that's what we want to talk about today. Oh, I think we went off again. Good listening is all about relationship. There we go. Got it. Thank you. It's all about relationship with God and with others. Listening is key to relationship. And the good news is listening is a skill that you can develop. You see, you can't have a relationship without communication. It requires um, both speaking, we need to speak, and we need to listen. That's what a dialogue is. It's two people. And, um, you know, as we look into this topic on the art of listening, we're going to look at it through the lens of the book of Esther. Now, there's two reasons for that. You may think, why Esther? Well, first of all, because today is the first day of Pur is is the Feast of Purim. Today is the Feast of Purim. And that was established, if you know, in the book of Esther. But also, Esther was one of the greatest listeners uh, recorded in the Bible. And as a result of her listening, the course of history was changed. She, she listened, she heard, and she acted upon what she heard. Well, we're not going to have time to go through the, the book of Esther. Um, there's some major characters. You know, there's the King Xerxes and his, uh, the king of Persia, where the, the Jews were uh, exiled to, and many of them were still in Persia. And um, King Xerxes was, the, was a powerful ruler, and he, uh, he had a, a queen called Vashti, Vashti um, dishonored him in a way th during a lavish feast that he had, and so he was uh, advised to dethrone her and to bring, they brought all the beautiful young virgins in the kingdom before him for uh, a beauty contest. Basically, that's what it was. It was a beauty contest. Esther, who was a Jewish girl who was raised by Mordecai, who was a cousin of hers, was brought to the king's palace. She was a beautiful young woman. She was brought in, so she was one of the contestants in this beauty contest. You know, think about that in the Bible, a beauty contest, but that's what it was. And um, Esther had a very uh, beautiful character. Not only she was beautiful on the outside, but Esther was, was beautiful within. Uh, she had a heart to hear. She had a heart to listen, and that's why we want to focus on Esther today. Um, 
Esther was brought into the harem and was under the care of Haggai, who was the king's eunuch. And it says that Esther um, found favor with Haggai. The reason is because she, she was... Uh, she had a tender heart to hear and to take counsel. We see that later on when Esther was brought before the king. Um, and it says that, that Esther, the women could take anything they wanted before the king. But what did Esther take? She took only what Haggai, the king's eunuch, recommended. You see, whatever those women took before the king, they would keep. That would be their possession. Now, only one of them was going to get to be queen, um, but the other women could take whatever they wanted with them before the king. Esther took only what Haggai recommended. She listened to the counsel of those around her. She had learned how to listen from her cousin Mordecai, who had raised her as his own daughter. He was one who listened also, and we see in that story that he was a listener. It says that he was, at one point, he was sitting at the gate listening, and um, he overheard a conspiracy. He was listening. His ear was tuned in. He overheard a conspiracy. He heard the plan of the enemy. He was able to act on it and report it so that the king was not assassinated. He was a listener, and he taught Esther how to listen. And so Esther not only listened to, um, she, she listened to her, her cousin Mordecai, she was trained by him. He actually told her, he said, when you get into the palace, don't reveal who you are. Don't reveal that you're a Jew. That was key information to keep hidden until the appropriate time. She listened, she learned. She took counsel of those around her. And then when the villain in the story and by the way, if you haven't read the book of Esther, you need to go home and read it. It's only like eight chapters. It's a great book. It's just captivating from beginning to end. The villain is exposed, Haman, this wicked man who wants to uh, gain more power and, and, and more authority in the land. And he wants to annihilate the Jews because he got offended by Mordecai. And so he has this wicked plan to destroy the Jews, and he convinces the king to that a decree could be written to destroy them. And so there's an appeal to Esther, and Esther knows that her life is on the line also, and um, and Mordecai appeals to her. You know, yes, your life may be on the line, but you have been placed in such a position for such a time as this. And you know, I just want to say to each one of us here, we have been placed for such a time as this. This is the year 2017. This is March the 12th. You are here because God placed you here. He has a purpose for your life. And the more we can tune in to the voice of heaven, the more we can hear, the more he will not only speak life into our own personal being, but he will use us to bring life to others because that's the purpose. You know, he could have taken us home already, couldn't he? We could have gotten saved and gone home. But there's work for us to do here on the planet Earth until his return or until that moment when he does take us home. And so we need to develop this skill to listen. And so Esther replies, there's a need for her to, to hear what is the plan? Why am I here? And what am I supposed to do? How can I be used to rescue my people? And so this is what she says. Go gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my attendants will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. She was laying her life down. You see, Esther went in there for three days to fast, to pray, and to listen. She had to get the plan of heaven. She had to hear from heaven, and she did get the key, the, the plan that was birthed in heaven. And so she ended up going and approaching the king. She was directed by God to prepare two back-to-back -back banquets. And we would say, why? Why two back-to-back -back banquets? Because that's what the Father said from heaven. That was the plan that was unfolded before her. Um, she wasn't to verbalize her request right away. And sometimes we're quick to speak. We're too quick to speak. We need to wait on the Lord for him to reveal the proper timing because proper timing can be everything. It can make or break the difference. And so there was the king who listened. Remember the king had a sleepless night? And what did he do? He said, read me 
the books, the record of all the books, of the happenings in the kingdom. And as the king was listening to what was being read, he realized that Mordecai had never been uh, uh, honored for revealing the assassination plot. And that was part of the plan that unfolded then to save the Jews. And so there's listening that's taking place on many different levels. Esther also listened for the voice of God saying, listen to the enemy's strategy. See, she was listening for Haman's strategy. What was his weakness? Boasting, pride, power, his lust. And so she was listening for the enemy's weak and vulnerable points because that was part of the strategy. And as she listened and obeyed, God moved. And she set up the, the, the banquets and, um, and, and God providentially delivered his people through a woman who would listen, hear, and act accordingly. And so Mordecai was awarded Haman's position of authority. The Jews were able to defend themselves. And not only they defended themselves, they were not killed, but they were able to plunder the enemy. And so they came out in a much better position by the end of this whole ordeal. And then the Feast of Purim was established as, as a day to commemorate the victory of God. It was a day to celebrate what God had done. But it came through a young woman who was listening to the voice of heaven. And God used her. We need to be listening to the voice of heaven because God wants to use us. If we don't hear what God is saying, he cannot use us. Do we realize that? If we don't listen, he can't use us. Esther had learned how to hear. She had been trained as a young woman to hear from her youth so that when the crisis came, she could hear in the midst of the crisis. Every crisis is an opportunity for a deeper, more fulfilling relationship with God, and his answers will come forth in the process. You see, as we hear, our relationship with God grows. We grow closer to him. There's more value in that relationship. Like with Lisa Bevere, that so touched me that she heard the thing that she couldn't, she couldn't even believe God would say that. But it was what God said, and the fruit is evident. We need to listen, recognize his voice. That's where true relationship is born. And as we listen and we respond to the voice of the Lord, we we move into a higher place of trust, don't we? As you, as you recognize, like Lisa, just take that for instance. When she realized what God did out of, out of speaking those words to her father, you were a good father. What did that do in her walk with God? It propelled her to a much higher place in her trust, in her communion, in her fellowship with God her intimacy with the Father. So every act of trust and obedience to what we hear from God brings increase in our life. You know, sometimes we're so focused on resolving the difficulties that we miss the bigger picture of what God wants to do in our lives. Have you ever been there? Like, just, God, would you just deal with this? Just get it out of my way? I'm sick and tired of this? And we miss the whole realm of what God is doing in us, in our heart, in our relationship. Sometimes we need to just quiet down. We just need to simmer down. We need to draw closer. Instead of focusing everything on the issue, the crisis, we need to focus on God. Because truly, our fellowship with him is more important than the issues we face. Our fellowship with him is more important than those issues. Know that God loves you immeasurably, and he is communicating and he wants you to hear his voice. You see, good listening is an act of love. Good listening is an act of love toward God and toward man. If you love someone, you want to listen to them. You know, you'll take the time to listen. Good listening re reflects value. And when we don't listen, that diminishes the other person. What, the ones we will listen to, we value. And so... You know, that principle applies to the Lord, and it also applies to other people. We need to demonstrate value by listening. Good listening requires patience. Uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who was a German theologian who died uh, during the Nazi, Nazi era there, 
Um, he said, there is a kind of listening with half an ear that presumes already to know what the other person has to say. Has, have we ever done that? You got half an ear. I think I know what you're going to say, and I really am not interested. You know, it's an impatient ear, and just waiting to be able to speak instead of really listening. Maybe we're half-eared because our attention is distracted. We're already on to the next thing. Let's just finish this so I can get on to what's really important. You know, that's not really listening. Sometimes we're too preoccupied with ourselves um, to really listen because we just want to say what we want to say, and we're not really listening. So good listening requires patience. You know, I would say that when you're listening to God, be ready to listen deeper, on a deeper level. A number of years ago, I, I got a word. The Lord spoke to me, a verse. He just gave me a reference, Joshua 17, 3. I didn't know what it was. I turned there, and this is what it says. Now Zelophehad, son of Hefer, son of Gilead, son of Maker, the son of Manasseh, had no sons but only daughters, whose names were Mela, Noah, Hogla, Milka, and Tirzah. I thought, wow, phew, man, did I miss it. <laughs> but it wouldn't go away. God was speaking. It wouldn't go away. And so I, I just had to pray, Lord, speak. What are you saying? And as I waited, he gave me a revelation. And I went and I looked up all the meanings of the names. And God spoke to me about inheritance. And it was a powerful word that was really deep and transforming for me at that point. But I have to tell you that I was just recently reading a Dale Mass book about two sons and a father, and he talks about inheritance. And he, many verses he, he references, but that was one of them. And when I read it, and I was reading what he spoke about it, this is what hit me. Wow, I could have gone deeper. I, I, I should have listened more. I should have waited on the Lord more because I would have gotten more if I had waited back then. You know, there's always deeper you can go in God. So don't be satisfied with a little, go deeper. Your life will be transformed in the process. We need to prepare our heart to hear from him. That means we have to quiet the noise. We live in a noisy world. We have to um, quiet ourselves, quiet the noise, the physical noise, and quiet the noise in our head. Before you can hear him, you have to be ready to listen. You know, remove the distractions. It's all about relationship. I just want to um, give you this, and it's actually on a card in your, in your bulletin. Whenever you encounter a difficult situation, ask the Lord, what do you want to be in my life? And what do you want to do through my life in this situation? You see, God wants to be something for you in that crisis. He wants to be something, just like he was for Esther, like he was for Lisa. He wants to be something for you. And he wants you to be something. He wants you to grow into something. And then he wants to use you through that to bless others, okay? So, so often we're missing what God wants to do in our life. If we would quiet and listen, what do you want to be for me now? What is the life you want to speak to me, Lord, that you can then move through my life? You know, Esther is an interesting book because the name of God does not appear. It's the only book. In the Bible, the name of God does not appear. Nowhere will you find God in this book. But his name is hidden. There's five places where his name is hidden as an acrostic in the Hebrew letters. It's hidden. And in actually several manuscripts, those letters were written in larger uh, print there. They were printed larger so that they would stand out. So five times, God is present, just like he was present in Esther in an unseen way, moving behind the scenes. He's present in your life, moving behind the scenes. If we could see what he's kept us from, we would be in awe. So the crisis, whatever difficulty you're facing, it's your classroom. That's your classroom. God wants to speak to you. He wants to be something more to you that you've never known before. You know, he wants to be everything to you. We've known him maybe as this much, but he wants to be known as this much. And then he wants to be known as this much. And then he wants to be known as this much. We've got to draw close and listen. 
to the voice of the Lord. And so, here's some questions to ponder. Do you truly desire to hear from God? Or are you half-eared listening? Do you truly desire? Or only what sounds good, if it sounds right? But will you listen with a full ear? Has anything hindered your trust in God and interfered with your ability to hear from him? If so, we need to get it out of the way. The Lord doesn't want anything to hinder your trust in him. Get it out of the way. Whatever it takes, deal with it. And then three, how can you plan to quiet the noise in your life so that you're able to listen? That's different for each one of us, but the noise has to be eliminated in order to hear from God. As we walk out this life in God, desiring to hear from him, it's a process, and it's a process of growing in relationship. See, he wants to grow, draw closer to us each step of the way. And so I encourage you to take, take this, take this card, keep it in your Bible, put it on your desk, whatever. And in the difficulties, communicate with him and listen to what he says to you. But then we can also receive prayer. That's another part of this process. We can receive prayer, impartation, in order to help us in our journey. So I'd like to ask the altar ministry team to come up. And um, just we're going to do this quickly. If you could just all come up right now. I'd like you to just form two lines facing one another here, the altar ministry team, if you would. And actually others who may not be on the schedule today, feel free to come on up if you'd like to. And I just want to give you an opportunity to, um, yeah, just three, four on a side, however it is, just even it out, to come and receive prayer. And this is the picture I got. You know, I believe there are angels here that are here to minister the, the, uh, the, the impartation of the Lord in order for us to draw closer to him, to hear his voice. This is important to God, that his children hear his voice. He says, my sheep know my voice. We need to tune in to the voice of the Father. So I just want to give you the opportunity, um, and the worship team, if you would like to come on up, please, um, to, to receive prayer, that we're just going to have you, whoever would like an impartation in this realm of hearing the voice of God. If you would like increase, how many would like increase in their ability to hear God's voice? I, I do, all of us, I think. Um, we're just going to ask you to just come file down this way and just come and they're just going to pray for you as you walk on through we're just going to keep it quick we're running kind of late just kind of file right on through and they're just going to quickly pray for you as you walk on through it's not going to take a lot of time but we just want to pray impartation to hear the voice of the lord okay that's good so lord we thank you we thank you lord god we just pray the blessing of the voice of god that you may hear the voice of God. You would listen. You would be blessed. The anointing of the Spirit of God would be upon you. Your ears would be opened up. Distractions would be removed in Jesus' name. Distractions removed. And the anointing to hear, the anointing to hear, to listen, to listen, to recognize the voice of the Father in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. You can have it all, Lord Every part of my world Take this life and breathe on it This heart that is now yours You can have it all This life and breathe on this heart that is now yours. Oh, the joy I found surrendering my crowns at the Surrender everything 
every part of my world. Take this life and bring it on. This heart that is now yours. You can have it all, Lord. Every part of my world. 
keep 